Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about coordination services, which should really wrap up this whole concept of consensus. And once we're done with this video, allow us to compare and contrast a bunch of different database technologies and, you know, just really understand why it is that they perform the way that they perform. I don't think the video should be more than a couple of minutes long, which you know, if you ask me personally, is a pretty long time. I don't know, my ex-girlfriend might not agree, but that is an argument for a different day. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so like I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about coordination services. So there's not a ton of technical content to cover in this video, the reasoning being that we just did it in the last two. Co coordination services are basically just thin layers that are built on top of some distributed consensus algorithm, like Raft, in order to basically help us with all of this configuration that we need within our distributed backend. So what type of configuration could that be? Well, we have IP addresses for things like our servers, our databases, our load balancers, our CDNs, anything along those lines. Our replication schema, what database is sending rights to which? Where are those databases located? Who is the leader currently? All super important stuff. And then also something like a partitioning breakdown. What partitions are located on which node? What range of keys does that include? Or what hash range of keys does that include? We have tons of configuration that if we were to mess it up via you know, something that allowed us to have write conflicts or race conditions or just stale reads in general, then obviously the basically correctness of our service would be hugely jeopardized. And this would be way more you know, kind of damaging to our user base than potentially one single lost comment. So kind of the, the logic here is that even though consensus is slow, for things like uh, the configuration of our application, we're willing to make that trade off because it's extremely important to get it right. So the typical pattern that you would use is you would put this configuration in something like a coordination service, which again is just a small key value store. And then for your actual application data, you know, user post history, comments, anything like that, you would use a different type of database that itself may be relying on the coordination service to be correct. So what are some examples of modern day coordination services? Well, the two that you've probably heard of or at least may sound familiar would be Zookeeper or etcd. Uh, etcd or whatever it's pronounced uh, runs on Raft. Zookeeper runs on its own thing called Zab that's similar to Raft, but the point is they're using distributed consensus. So if there is any technical content in this video, it would basically just be how reads work because we've covered how writes and leader election work in consensus, but how will we actually read the data to make sure that we're getting linearizable reads? Because if I were to write a piece of data and then not be able to read it right after from some replica, that would be problematic. That would make our application prone to incorrectness and cause problems down the line. So like I've mentioned multiple times now, we were built on top of some distributed consensus layer. And if you remember from me drawing this pretty much for the last three or four videos, that basically means that we've got some sort of leader and then a couple of follower nodes. And the follower nodes are not necessarily completely up to date, right? As you can see on the bottom here, this follower node is a bit behind. So that is a possibility in all of our distributed consensus algorithms, but there are still ways to make sure that your reads are linearizable. What we don't want is a client making a read right here. So this would be read one where we see x equals five, and then that x equals five is at index one in the log, right? Because we go zero, one, two. And what we don't want is for our client to then go ahead and read from the node that's behind over here and then see x equals three because then our reads would not be linearizable. We can't be having that. So what can we do to avoid this situation? Well, we've got two easy options. One, we can always just read from the leader. That's a super easy option. However, it comes at the price of, well, if we're always reading from the leader, that means that all writes and all reads are going through the leader, and that is going to be slow. Another option is that sometimes we can actually read from different follower nodes. The key thing to note is that, again, we want those reads to be linearizable. So how can we ensure that they actually are? Well, at least in Zookeeper, there's some functionality called the sync keyword. So again, we have our client here. Let's imagine that we read from the leader and the, re the leader is going to uh, basically report back that x is equal to five and that is at index one of the log, right? Like you're updated to index one. So what the leader or basically what the client would then go ahead and do is they say, okay, well, I want to read from this guy, but I'm afraid that the data there is stale and my read is not going to be linearizable. So I'm going to write a keyword sync into the log. And you can see that goes over here at index two. And so sync is now going to get propagated to these nodes. 
And so now, since the client knows that it's seen index one, until it actually reads back, and now, you know, eventually some more time passes and this guy gets filled up to date, blah, 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 blah. And until it reads back and sees sync at index two, it knows that the data on the follower node that it wants to read from is stale. Once it does see sync, then it can start reading from that follower. And you can basically keep reading from that follower until you either make another write or until you basically go ahead and switch reading from a different follower. So yeah, the fact that you can do this means that we can have greater read throughput because once we sync once, we're gonna start being able to make linearizable reads from that follower node. And as a result of being able to do that, we take some of the stress off of our leader. So this does allow us to have a little bit greater of a read throughput. So let's quickly do a conclusion for coordination services. Basically, they're too slow to be used for most of our application data. In a real massive service like Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, if you're sending all the writes through a single leader and basically that has to effectively go through some sort of two-phase commit, we're running into some serious performance problems that probably are not going to be feasible for the scale of our application. At the same time, all of these apps have key pieces of configuration, which we mentioned before, our backend needs in order to be able to run. We need to know the location of all of our nodes in our cluster. We need to be able to know what data is stored on what partition, things like that. And if we don't have that in a reliable setting, in a way that you know we can access it and be sure that it's correct, then we're running into some serious issues as well. So typically the solution would be to use something that is a bit more scalable for our application data, but then something like coordination service for this configuration. And of course, the reason why we can rely on it is because it is built on top of consensus algorithms. Being able to read in a linearizable way means that we can be sure that the data that we're reading, even though it could technically be a little bit outdated, either A, we could always read from the leader, or B, at minimum, our reads are going to be linearizable. So we're never just going to like be jumping backwards all of a sudden and seeing some previous state that we weren't already aware of and thinking it was more up to date than our current state. Anyways, guys, I hope that this helps understand what coordination services are actually used for. Only just a little bit of a pit stop from, you know, continuing to talk about databases. And then in the next video, we will do just that yet again. See you guys then.